Welcome to Backstage, and please give a warm Winnipeg welcome to Susan Clark, returning to Winnipeg, and Cindy Williams, her very first time here in Winnipeg. And well, folks, well, need we say more? We have such great stage experience and TV experience right here. Two wonderful actresses. And here for Steel Magnolias. What a fantastic play for you, Cindy. Yes, it's a lot of fun, a wonderful cast. I'm so happy to be working with Susan. And uh, so far, so good. Yes, and into rehearsals now, Susan, and, and being here at back at MTC, what does it mean for you? Oh, it's great. I, I like Winnipeg a lot. And the people are fun. And this stage, which you can see behind us, is just magical. It's really, I have to tell you a quick story. Friends of mine, <coughs> excuse me, came from Los Angeles, and they got a tour from the people backstage. And they said, oh, this is lovely, big theater, and it's wide perceive it's almost like a Broadway stage and pure Canadiana said actually it's bigger <laughs> <laughs> and it oh, is it is. is and and I just love coming in and watching this fabulous crew with hydraulic lifts and moving stuff it's it's fun it's really it's exciting well okay we're gonna get into it now ladies TV, movies, now into live theater. You've seen it and you've done it, Cindy. What is the secret to still being able to do it all and to be able to perform still today? I'm still breathing. <laughs> That's part <laughs> of it. Um, well, I, um, I was a theater arts major mm -hmm. in college and uh, that's what I always uh, aimed to aim for, was to do regional theater and eventually Broadway and um, because I went to school in Hollywood, uh, they didn't teach you, you know, they didn't teach you anything except theater there, and it was a very, very um, traditional, professional uh, theater department. And so when I graduated, I didn't, uh, I was in Hollywood, so I did the next best thing. I could have gone to New York, but I was too frightened to. I was a valley girl. And so I, I got a job at the House of Pancakes and just figured something would, you know, happen and it, it it did but I ended up in television and uh, but I'm much more comfortable on stage really mm -hmm. well you know what you brought us so much laughter and joy in Laverne and Shirley and, and truly I mean opened the doors for a lot of young actresses to pursue careers and uh, absolutely yeah. that, that show was iconic yeah. it was wonderful so was yours <laughs> Webster. Webster. Yeah. Yeah, it's too long ago to remember. I know, but being a Canadian actress, though, you have done a lot. The list of leading men that you've had. Gene yeah, but Hatman. they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're dead. Burt Lancaster. Well, Burt Reynolds is still with us, but um, Henry Fonda. Who else? You remember them. Robert better. Redford. Robert Redford is alive and well and living in Utah. Who else? Robert Wagner is still around. That's right. So there are a few. There are a few. Yes, and for yourself, getting into acting, what was it like? Getting into acting. I've done it all my life, and I didn't start in television. I started in, in the theater. Like a good Canadian, I went to London and studied and worked in the rep theater there. Came back, did some CBC, was under contract for a decade because I kept leaving to go and do theater, came back, and television was a way to make money and and the series was great in that it, it 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 teaches you how to act in modern plays yes it really does yeah. i mean i was classically trained and had no idea really how to say um did you forget the milk i mean what does that mean <laughs> but it means nothing but it's so it, what's in in, in in yes because <laughs> you're selling cereal but um so i had to retrain in in los angeles with stella adler and i had a great time but doing 150 episodes of of a sitcom which would never have been my first choice or dream but i learned a lot and i'm very grateful mm -hmm. for having to step up to the mark week after week after week. It was, it was fun. And it's discipline, too. And if you look at TV now, it's reality TV. What do you like to watch, Cindy? Or if, do you do watch TV? Hmm. Mm -hmm. The Housewives of New York. Oh. <laughs> Army wives are coming up. Oh, Army wives. Uh, are they? The real, ar real Army wives? No, no, no. Oh. oh, right. The series, right. Um, 
I don't know. I used to like. You mean in reality television? In reality? Crazy? Yes. Uh, well, I used to love Survivor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see a celebrity Survivor. Um, that might still be in the works. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, what's the other show? Oh, I love Project Runway and um, Top Chef. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I want to ask, why do you think Laverne and Shirley was so popular in its day? Well, I think it was new. It was um, a situation comedy about two women, although there had been, you know, Lucille Ball, but I wouldn't even compare us to that um, because they were in such a different category. Um, I, it, and it, we were working girls, struggling, and we always got, you know, uh, trapped on our own petard, so to speak. We always, you know, if, if we try, there was always a little moral about the show. Mm -hmm. And it was a physical show cause, because Penny and I both, <coughs> pardon me, wanted to do physical comedy and so it developed into a physical show which is always fun for an audience to watch and, and, and it was um, a lot of fun to do. I mean, the episodes that are funny that you laugh at, you can be sure we were laughing, you know, also. That was sort of our litmus paper. If we didn't laugh at it in rehearsal, then we knew it wasn't going to translate to the audience uh, in terms of humor. So. Um, but there were some real stinkers. <laughs> and, you know, um, Susan, what did you win an Emmy for? You won an Emmy for... <laughs> I won an Emmy for Babe, not the pig, oh, that's right. the athlete. That's yes. right. Yes, yes. And that was, but that was a movie for television. Mm -hmm. Different, easier, I think. Television series, that is the most tricky job of all. Because mm -hmm. you have to keep your energy up and it goes for eight or nine months and a movie for television or a movie movie is top six months mm -hmm. with days off let's talk about the situation now roles for women you two have landed a plum here at MTC but what kind of roles are out there for women of all ages well Why it depends you where you're going I mean if you're in the theater there are lots of good roles for women I don't watch television anymore. I'm sorry. I, I'm a news junkie. I like the environment. I like documentaries. Um, t I'm not interested in people going upside down into a cave of bats and snakes. I just don't think that's entertainment, but that's just me. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think women today are so much smarter than our generation because they also direct and write and create their own stuff and do stand-up comedy and start their own theater companies. I mean, you've got a lot of theater in yeah. Winnipeg, a lot per population. It's amazing. And I see more and more young people taking the bull by the horns and not just content to wait for the phone to ring, but they're getting out there and they're making it happen. And that's what's exciting. I mean, like the Olympics. My gosh, when I watch the Olympics, on television even 20, 25 years ago, there were this many women and this many men. Now it's all, it's pretty equal. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you those jumps and whatever the, 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 uh, whatever those events are called, the women were as exciting as the men to watch. Yeah. Well, and again, if you look at this place, Steel Magnolias, it's about relationships, women of all ages getting together, one common goal, I guess, is to make sure their hair looks great, but I think there is like a common bond between women, much different than men, that can last a long time. I, I believe that. I mean, <clears throat> pardon me, my best friend and I, we sort of have um, short talk, you know. I mean, we know ex we can finish each, each other's sentences, and it's the same in this play. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just already, you know, just during rehearsal, there are just times when I... I've just known what Susan was thinking or what she was going to do with the character there and 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 it's such a joy and and when women get together um, there is a shorthand between them the experience I think is more in common with each other than when with men unless they're playing sports uh, but I just think that there's a commonality that women share a, a, and it's a bonding sort of thing that's always there unless it's a really terrible, mean woman. Well, this, this play is about three generations, too. It's mm -hmm. about the 60s, the 40s, and the 20s, and how they interact, and how the network, emotional network, binds them all into this sisterhood. And that, I think, is extraordinary that a man wrote it, and he wrote it so well. 
And there are things in this play that are hysterically funny, even just sitting at the table reading it. I think audiences are going to have a good time. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. And just to have Susan Clark and Cindy Williams on the same stage will be funny enough and a gem <laughs> in itself. Before we wrap up, though, your career has spanned so many, so many things in so many venues. But is there any one thing or, or something that in particular stands out that you're most proud of, Susan? I think I'm very proud of Babe, and I'm very proud of Amelia Earhart, and I'm proud of, of uh, that my husband and partner and I co-produced Webster, that we survived, that the marriage survived 150 <laughs> episodes wow. of doing the same show together. Yeah, I'm proud of that, but I'm, I'm, I'm proud to come back and forth to Canada. I'm still Canadian, so I, I'm glad to be here. Wow. For you, Cindy. Well, I would have to, I, it's a toss up between working uh, with George Lucas on American Graffiti and that wonderful cast and Laverne and Shirley because it, it's just such a blessing to be able to make people laugh. And um, so, and, and again, to, to be on stage and to do this wonderful play, it, it's such a, an honor and a blessing and to be with this wonderful cast and I'm looking so forward to it. Well, there you go. Thank you so much, ladies. We look forward to your performances right here at the MTC main stage, Steel Magnolias. For Backstage and Shaw TV, I'm Tracy Koga. There's somebody coming. A strange lady with a strange dog. That would be Weezer. That is one ugly dog. What kind of dog is that? If Red had hair, he would be a collie. Lord, give us strength. This is it. I have found it. I am in hell. Morning, Weezer. Don't try to get on my good side. I no longer have one. You're a little early. You're not expected till 11 ish. That is precisely why I am here. I have to cancel. I have to take my poor dog to the vet before he has a nervous breakdown. My dog, that is. The vet is perfectly healthy. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Where's the baby's breath? We want I to put, put the baby's breath in there. Yes. I actually Let's go. Let's go with it now. This is Rob's, Rob Patterson. Rob Patterson. Yes, Rob Patterson, the director. <laughs> <That's> it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this is the talented cast of Steel Magnolias, currently on at MTC Main Stage. We have Cindy Williams here playing Weezer, and we have Susan Clark there, the glam clary. And look at these lovely ladies in behind. Local Sharon Bezier. And I want to say, yeah. did you have to take hairdressing? school for this role? Yes, yes, three weeks, three weeks of it. I'm a pro now. <laughs> yeah. She is. She's <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> all right, Rob, what is it like to be amongst all these women? Yeah, it's a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it, it is. It's marvelous. It's, at times, I feel like, believe it or not, one of the girls. I mean, we talk about hair. We talk about clothing. We talk about men. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's a little odd. But no, it's great fun. Yeah. Well, and Cindy, finally getting the play on the stage. Good feeling? Great feeling. Aww. Yes. Great cast. Great people to be among. Just a whole bunch of fun. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> Feels like home for you now, Susan, too. Yes, it's great to be back. Yeah. And again, a, a great story, all about relationships. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, my husband doesn't even have a name. We call him my husband through the whole play. But he's <laughs> sort of like your real husband right now. <laughs> yeah, my real husband, my phantom husband. Uh, but again, it's so much fun. Thank you so much for bringing this play to life. And I know that Winnipeg is going to enjoy it. So check it out, Steel Magnolias, on stage until May 15th. For more information, you can go to the website, and that's mtc.nb.ca. Back to hair. <laughs> and those are natural curls, right, Rob? And yours is very, yeah. very nice. Yeah. 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 I go on that stage and I do feel I live in Chickapin County and I have known these people, Shelby since she was born and and Clary has been my best friend, you know, and put up with me for years and years and uh, I, I believe it all. It's a combination of people I know and a little bit of me. I haven't seen the movie for since it came out and I, I tried to put Shirley MacLaine out of my head when I did it, but I do remember her 
um, just her general um, agitation, we'll say, uh, playing that role and uh, as the character, and which I love because it was so much fun. Now you're uh, here doing a lot of stage, and you've been doing more uh, stage work. What's it like for you to be on the stage? How do you feel? It's just something very, very familiar to me, and I love it. I just love it. It's, it's. I feel more comfortable on stage sometimes than I do in my own home, if that makes any sense to anyone. The perfect opportunity to meet the right kind of people. Didn't you always want to go inside one of those big, beautiful homes? Film is, to me, the most uh, difficult of, uh, and challenging of all the mediums. Um, it's just because it's just you and a camera. Whereas we would have some film actors as guest stars on Laverne and Shirley, and they were totally lost working like that, like on stage. So um, I am most comfortable on stage, though. That's what I was trained for, and that's what I love to do. Ann Blythe and Donna Reed are your daughters? American Graffiti. I got to uh, co-produce Father of the Bride, which was my idea to to remake it, so that was a big thrill. Um, and of course, Laverne and Shirley, and um, working with Francis Coppola on the conversation. I mean, I've just been, it's just been pretty wonderful, my life. You know, there, it, the whole thing's a highlight. Oh, Laverne, tiss, tiss, tiss. No matter what, you're always going to be known to the world as Shirley Feeney. What do you take, what do you make of that? How does that feel? It's a total blessing and a privilege and an honor. When they come up to me or Penny or any of the cast, they come up with the best of themselves because it's, it's a happy time and a happy memory. And, and, you know, whereas if I'd done Nightmare on Elm Street, it might be another story, you know, how fans would approach you. But because we were a mirthful show and gave that uh, gave people an audience that kind of enjoyment it's it's pretty it's a happy time when uh, i just love it i feel very blessed this time there's no stopping us shamil shamazel Pass and pfeffer incorporated i get it you like laverne and shirley yes <laughs>